Hugh Ross, astrophysicist. He is uh, also the founder of Reasons to Believe and senior scholar. He's an amazing guy. He's been on with us before. I did a podcast a few weeks ago with him. Uh, he found he found Christ. He found God through uh, looking at the stars. Uh, an astrophysicist is somebody who looks deep into the past uh, and tries to see what the um, you know what what creation was, what was happening millions of years ago. Hugh, thank you so much for being on the program. Oh, my pleasure. Um, so there was something that, and I've been I've been reading stuff about this for I don't know thirty years. It's always fascinated me, but I I'm you know I'm not a I'm not a scientist or anything like it, and so I have such a base understanding of it. Um, last week. We had a we had a major solar flare. Solar flares can affect, like an EMP, can affect our power grid if they're bad enough. Uh, and we're also going through a time period where, while the sun is at its peak activity right now, uh, our magnetic field is weak because our poles are drifting at about forty miles per year, which is pretty extraordinary, isn't it? Yeah, the pole uh, shift is moving. It's uh, quite a bit faster than it was the previous century, but it's not out of the ordinary. Okay. And so uh, when you do get a, a, a reversal of the uh, magnetic pole, uh, you do get rapid motion. We're nowhere near that degree of rapid motion yet. But people And that could be saying, a thousand hey, years, yeah. right? I mean, rapid for the Earth could be a thousand years from now. Yes, uh, it could even be a million years from now. Okay. So, uh, and there have been hundreds of pole reversals in the past, and uh, none of them have done serious damage to life. Um, but it is true that when you approach uh, you know, a pole reversal, the magnetic field weakens, and our magnetic field has been weakening by about 6% per century. Uh, but again, that's not of the ordinary. Uh, our magnetic field... Uh, always varies, either goes down slowly or up slowly. Right now it's going down slowly. And it you know, may actually turn around and start to go up a little bit. Uh, so the variation of the magnetic field, the movement of the magnetic pole, none of that's out of the ordinary. On the other hand, we can't rule out the possibility we're heading towards a magnetic reversal. So what does that mean? The North Pole becomes the South Pole? Yes. Uh, well, what actually happens is the... You can think of the Earth's magnetic field like a bar magnet with a north and south right. pole. That's called a dipole field. Uh, what happens is when the magnetic field begins to weaken, it transitions from being a dipole to being a multipole, where you've got more than two poles. And that could last for a period of, say, a century or two or thousands of years. Then it flips around. And it then becomes north and south, but what was north is now south, what is south is now north. What does that do? I mean, that, that whole shift, what, what you know, and, and let's use a, a thousand-year uh, timetable because we don't know. Could it happen quickly, first of all? It could happen quickly, but that's rare. Usually it's a rather slow, gradual onset. Okay. Um, and, I mean... Uh, physicists are watching this to see what's happening. Right. Uh, but right now we're not seeing anything that's really outstanding or out of the ordinary. Okay, so uh, but, what happens as it starts? I assume they drift, and they're not connected per se, because I think the, solar, the south pole is actually moving slower than the north. But as they go towards, like, east and west, right? Well, right now it's uh, it's moved uh, past the North Pole, the the uh, the axis. It used to be in uh, northern Canada, and over the past 150 years, uh, it's moved a little bit past the North Pole. Um, and it could switch and go east and west instead of north and south. Uh, you know, businesses have been mapping this uh, polar wandering of the, of the magnetic pole for for quite some time. Right. There's been over 100 reversals in the past history of the Earth. And uh, we do know that the magnetic field weakens when it happens, weakens by about a factor of 10. But even a factor of 10 weakening is not devastating to life. We can't document a single uh, extinction of a species during mm. a magnetic reversal. 
but it could impact health. I mean, uh, when you've got a weaker yes. magnetic field, uh, you've got more cosmic radiation coming in. It's like if you live in Denver, you get exposed to more cosmic radiation, and uh, your average lifespan uh, gets lessened by three months. And is that um, because of all the progressive laws that are there? or <laughs> Well, it could be. <laughs> <laughs> but no, you do get a few more cosmic rays if you live at high elevation. Right. Uh, okay. But hey, so, you've got healthier lifestyles. That might counteract it. <laughs> I know that we are, they, they've had to adjust the GPS system. Um, and is that because of the poles shifting? Uh, well, uh, you do have to adjust the clocks uh, because right. the Earth is very slowly spinning down. So, uh, you know, uh, every New Year's, physicists celebrate New Year's Day by adjusting all their atomic clocks by a few microseconds. But that's all it is. Just a few microseconds. So, but okay, but I've heard that it used to be. Uh, anyway, it, it, the the end of the story is that they're now adjusting them every six months. Is that true? Yeah. Well, that's that's true. I mean, uh, and we're going to have a new set of uh, GPS satellites that'll know where you are to within one or two centimeters. Jeez. Which case, they're going to have to be making even more frequent adjustments. But the adjustments are tiny. So when I was probably 25 years old, I wrote, I read this great book, and I have no idea if it's scientifically sound or not, but it talked about a catastrophic polar shift that the crust of the Earth, that some of the continents may have moved, and their theory was that uh, Atlantis was Antarctica, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but what fascinated me, and I know you're a religious guy, when it comes to, you know, end times, it says, and the stars will, will fall. The only way that I could think of in God's, you know, uh, magnificent math to make it look like stars fall would be some sort of a, a, a shift in the continents. As it, we would look up, we would be moving, but it would look like the stars are falling. Have you well, ever thought of that, or is that m nonsense? Well, the continents move uh, very rapidly. It would wipe out all life. And so uh, the continents move by a few centimeters per year. Uh, so I don't think that's what's happening. The word there for star in Greek is aster, and that can, could include uh, meteors. So maybe the star is falling is referring to a mm -hmm. meteor shower. Okay. Or it could be referring to the stars dimming in light, like if there is widespread forest and grass fires. That would cause all the stars. In fact, that text says the sun, moon, and stars dim by one-third. And that dimming would happen if you were surrounded by smoke. You know, um, we're, uh, uh, we're talking to Dr. Hugh Ross, and uh, the thing I don't like about this interview is he's so smart, he makes me look like an idiot, uh, which nobody usually does, but <laughs> I usually do that on my own. Um, uh, Hugh, um, so tell me the... Um, all of the stuff on the uh, aurora, the, the lights that we're looking at, there is, I've read a lot, and I don't know if this is true, that because of the magnetic field and if we have a massive, I think we had a, I don't even know, an X5 uh, solar flare yesterday, it was not headed in our direction, um, that that kind of stuff could blank out everything. It's like an EMP. Yeah, that could happen. In 1859, uh, there was a huge solar flare that uh, struck the Earth and uh, knocked out telegraph systems. If that were to happen today, it could knock out most of the world's power grids. And that would mean you'd be without electricity, not just for a few hours, uh, but for weeks, months, maybe even years. And that would be catastrophic because today we're very dependent on electricity. Think of refrigeration. You got no refrigeration, what does that do to your food supply? Right. So, uh, yes. and that kind of a flare happens about once every one or 200 years. Uh, but hey, it happened in 1859, and I've written a book making the point it would be wise for us to protect our power grids. Amen. There is one that's protected, and that's in Quebec. 
uh, and it got knocked out in 1989 by a flare like the one that happened, you know, just this past Friday. Uh, but that's the only protected power grid in the world. In the world? Yeah, I mean, they were close to the geomagnetic pole, so they took the most damage. Uh, and it was $11 billion of damage. Mm-hmm. And, uh, they, and But they, they now have a surge protector on it, so it's protected. Uh, but if we were to get a flare like we had in 1859, the damage to the U.S. alone would be over $2 trillion, and you would have millions of people dying. Jeez. Um, the, um, the sun is reversing its poles as well, but that happens like every 11 years? Yes, uh, we're at solar maximum right now. Every 11 years, you get more flaring activity, more sunspots. And so, yeah, for the next year, uh, we can expect to see more aurora displays like we had last Friday. And hopefully we're not going to get a flare hitting us like what happened in 1859. Yeah, yeah. Um, the, when does the sun start to go into solar minimum? Uh, it'll start going into solar minimum in about a couple of years. I mean, it's an 11-year cycle. And so for about a two-year period, you're at maximum. And then you head towards minimum, and then we go back to maximum again. And is there any correlation in your mind between the solar activity and maximum and minimum and global warming? No, there's really no connection between what's happening with the sun. The sun is getting brighter, but it's going to be a few million years before you notice a difference. So even if the sun is very active, it doesn't affect? or temperatures or anything? It has no effect. Uh, What's happening here on Earth is what you got to watch, not what's going on in the sun.